Hey you guys, welcome back to another Kimball's Corner. Uh, today I'm going to be working with my Jane Davenport Power Pastels. Pastels, pastels, whatever. Uh, they are basically like a creamier crown and a waxier oil pastel. Uh, yeah, I don't know how else to explain them. I've used them before. I just felt like using them again today. This was something funny that happened. Moving on. So I found a picture of a young model. I believe her name is Marina Neri or Neri. Marina Neri, I'm gonna go with that. Anyway, I found a gorgeous picture of her, so I'm going to use it as a reference, but I'm not really drawing her likeness. If it comes out looking like her, cool. If not, it's totally what I meant to have happen. And uh, also I'm trying a new little camera thingy, so we'll see if, see if that works out. Might not, I don't know. Let's get to it, shall we? I'm gonna sketch it out with the magic wand just, just to have an idea of what I'm doing. And if you're new to the Power Pastels, I wouldn't recommend doing a small image just because they're a little harder to control or not control, but like they're harder to get details. Kind of, I don't know. Maybe you're better at them than I am. But uh, I tend to have a little struggle. Also, I, I normally like using them on smoother surfaces, just cause I find them easier to blend. And I mean, they create enough texture uh, by themselves without having a textured surface. But hey, gonna try my best. All right, we've almost got the sketch good enough. Her chin just completely disappeared. Ooh. Since I'm drawing light enough, it might erase quite a bit. Now she has her hair pulled back in this image, which I will change, but oh my goodness, on her super long, delicate neck. She is a living swan. And by living swan, I mean human swan, because swans, there are a lot of living swans out there. Yeah. I have a hard time talking and drawing. Which is why I normally just have music playing. Um, let's see. I feel like we're getting somewhere. I have no idea what to do with her hair. But I wanna do something. Maybe I'll do something, uh, not like real hair. with it. Make this like a big rolly thing. Going over that with the power pestles may not be the easiest, but you know what, we're gonna make do. That's what we do on this channel, we make do. So, where to begin? I'm gonna start with a light, peachy, fleshy tone. And we're just gonna, 
I mean, it's got gunk on it. That's why I have like a little scrappy pad piece of paper off to the side and I can just do that and clean off some of the gunk. But I mean, I'm gonna lay down so much of this stuff. I don't know if that's even really an issue. And with these, it's better to build up kind of like some thin layers. They start going on thicker and thicker and they start to blend more and they start to look like an oil painting, in my opinion anyway. Like right now, it's very textured and very kind of see-through and very scary looking. It looks like she's wearing a weird mask. Base done. But um, bum. Um, I don't know where I was gonna do a little bump dump thing, but whatevs. These two colors, I love using for shading. They make like a really nice purple. Um, and I might just dive in with that. Cause why not really? Um, so around the sides. And you might go back in at the very end with either some palette pastels or even colored pencil, which doesn't actually lay on top of these, but it would cut through and you can, once it cuts through the waxy, creamy stuff, it'll leave marks on the paper. And that might be all I need. We'll see though. I may just use power pastels for the whole thing. Right now I'm just kind of blocking in shapes where like the shading would be. Um, roughly there-ish. And we're gonna want this one out. And, and, and let's just start bringing in the colors. I'm just blocking in highlights. Like I'm putting a nice thick layer of white on it just because it'll help me a little bit later. And the heat just turned on. And can I say how happy I am to have to have the heater turn on? Cause I am so over the hot weather. I'm so glad fall is in full swing. And like I said earlier, slowly build up. Like I did the foundation with this color and I'm kind of going back in adding where the shading is gonna be. I mean, I blocked in a bulk of the shading with the pink. But now I need to come back in and add in some more. And I'll slowly just keep building the colors up. And see what I mean, but like I shouldn't do, or it's harder to do a smaller piece, especially on the textured paper. But hey, it's also interesting. And I mean, if all it's fails, I can just go crazy and just turn this into a completely abstract drawing. I've done that before and it looks great. I tell myself. She has very pinky, purpley lips.
right, now that I've got the basics in, I'm gonna not use the reference. This was the reference I was using. I don't know if you can see it, but I've used it enough to get to where I want. Now just make it up. We're gonna go crazy. Oh, brr. Um, whew. I don't know what color to do her hair yet. Let's not worry about that just yet. Let's start refining. I feel like going a little more abstract with these or a little more impressionistic is a much better thing to do. Unless you're doing a large size, you can do a lot more detailing. There might be a lot of, ta lot of table shaking happening. I get very aggressive when I use these. I'm kind of using the white as a blender, even though I do actually have a blender. It's kind of giving, it's pastelizing it. Giving me more pastel colors. And then I'm gonna go back over and Harden them back up. Harshen them, I guess I should say, not harden. Slowly bringing the form back. Just carving it out ever so slightly. We're getting somewhere. Let's try and bring her eyes to life. There's a gray, let's try this gray. I never really use gray. But I do wanna just knock the whites of her eyes back without adding too much color. I know it didn't look like I did much, but I did something, I swear.
remember, just hinting at the color, hinting at the shape, really helps to bring it alive. You don't have to have mega details, especially when using, you know, a big chunky art supply. No point in beating yourself up if you can't get it to look perfect. Because this is a very difficult medium to make look perfect, let's be real. This is the stage where I like it more, um, where it's been built up a bit and the textures are a bit more fun to play around with. Maybe I'll bring in a new color for her eyelash surround. No, I don't like that one. Let's try just a darker, darker blue. That green sort of competed with her eye color. to go from here. Grab the, the reddest color I can find. getting somewhere. I think I'm gonna go with like browns, orangey, gold colors with her hair. I mean, I guess I could start with the red. Like it's not about being perfect, it's about having fun. seen some better days. All right, clean it up. See if I can peel off some of this paper. All right. And I think I'll work, okay, I'll put in a layer of gold. So we have it all nice and coated with a starting point. Plus the warm hair plays nicely off the cool face. Keep it reddish brown, but maybe for the darkest, 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 I'll use. Ooh, that's very dark. I'll just kind of fade that out. 
Just keep it nice and dark, like right around her face. And under here where the hair is in shadow, maybe a couple of dark lines here and there, but nothing too extreme. Like that's, that should be good. I can always come back and add more. And then we'll just go to our next darkest color, start building that up. And I just kind of drag the dark out. Like I take it a little bit further with every lighter, like with every color that I go up, I take the color out a little bit further. Like the darkest, I only did this area. And now with this color, I brought it out a little bit further. And then when I change to a lighter color, I'm gonna take it out a little bit further and just progressively do that. And that helps to build depth. I feel a sneeze hiding in my nose. <coughs> Woo! I survived. All right, so now, like I was saying, I got the next lightest color that I'm gonna use. So I'll color over what I've already done with the dark color, and then I'll take it out a little bit further. And I can start new spots too, like I just did. Because I don't want that to be too dark, but it needs to have some kind of value change. And then we can kind of just go over all this to make the color all go together. Shift it from a brown hue to a red hue and take it out a little bit further. And since I gave her hair like these weird swirlies, I'm just following the shape and, you know, making it up as I go, because that's what I do. And I'll do some defining lines after, like I'll go back in with the dark in a little bit. Okay, going to a lighter color and go over those same spots and drag it out a little bit further. And the, or the oranges and the yellows will really start warming it up because they're a lot more saturated than the browns. This is just all dark in here now. Like, Bloop. And there's so many different ways to do hair. I just, on this piece in particular, I'm doing just big shapes and shading out shapes to give the idea of hair. Right, now we can hit up the yellow again and really warm it up. I'm gonna try and keep it pretty clean for these whiter areas. I may actually go in reverse instead of starting dark, I might start with light and take it back into the dark just to keep my yellow cleaner yellow and not let it get too muckied up. Lightest parts colored in first. All right, 
And then we can go back in and kind of blend it into the oranges. Sorry about the shaking table. <laughs> I'll take it out onto this red line just because I don't really want the red outline to be so strong. I mean, you can definitely see the difference of having yellow up here as opposed to not really down here yet. Totally changes the look. Warms it up, makes it all nice and cozy and fiery. Funny thing is, I used to really dislike the color yellow. Maybe not so much in artwork, but in my day to day. And now I kind of really love it. Ah, oh, slowly transforming. That I don't need to do too much. I'm gonna go back in there with some darker lines. I may even use like a blue just to make it really pop because like a blue and all this orange will look very vibrant. Or if I blend it too much, it'll look really muddy and awful. And in that case, we'll just use black. try blue first and I'm gonna try a light blue and see if it works see I really like that may not be for everyone but it is definitely for me No need to be scared of color. If you mess it up, just go over it with black and it'll be like it was always meant to be. I'm gonna take a dark blue in for this area. All right, the darker blue was a little scary, but I'm gonna calm it down. Whew, it's always a little dangerous to calm down with a Complimentary color. Oh no, disaster, what have I done? Um, actually, why don't I just go over with a lighter blue? The way... That way it lightens it a little bit, but it also keeps that darker vibe. And I should go in with a really dark brown. Actually, will this brown work? Yeah, it's a little too light. Just this one to do some of these darker areas that kind of got lost with all the layering. Just kind of come back in and Help with the depth on those. Just kind of blur, blend it out, not blur it out. There, helped push, pull her face out and push the hair back a little. next to this blue, blue, and brown. Very popular combination. All right, all right, I'm seeing things. I think I wanna do a bold black outline around her because I've already started and I can't go backwards.
there's a leap on the other side of this. So it's making it kind of weird to draw over. But I think, woo, I might add like a pop of color between this black. Maybe I'll add some into our picture now because it's a bit strong. And just a little bit. hints here and there. All right, uh, I was going to add some colors on the inside of the black, which isn't always easy to do because it can pick up that black color very quickly and muddy up like that really quick. If I was a patient person, I could let it dry a little and it would be a tiny bit easier to go over. Well, I'm not a patient person. I'll just do it on that side. Add some hints of yellow, because it's what I do. And some pink. I'm kind of liking her. I'm tempted to see if... Oh. <laughs> I put it in the pen cup. I wanna see if this will lay over it. Why am I not surprised that it totally does? Just defining some details with a license to quill pen. Be very light-handed with it because I still wanted to have like that sketchiness that the whole picture has. Like I don't want to make it look like super refined eyeballs or anything because that might look a little weird. and keep it sketchy and loose, but still controlled. get crazy I could use an ink like mermaid markers or incredible inks or some other ink and just do the whole background of color but I think that is good that gives you a pretty good idea of how to use them um, you know layer them up don't be afraid of color you can always go back and change things I mean if all else fails pull out your acrylics and just cover it up or you can just like I could go in with this like I could take an acrylic and paint some lines or I could just paint over the color that I didn't like 
I mean, these are gonna lay over top of acrylics too. So if you like didn't like this whole section, you can just white it out, paint over it. That's the joy of mixed media. But I'm not quite done. I want to have her eyes just pop a little bit. I'm scared to use. I'm just gonna dab because I don't wanna pick up the color into or I don't wanna get waxy gunk on my uh, Storytime paint pen. But I don't know, to me, I think it looks like an, like an oil painting, like a rough oil painting. Maybe not to you, but that's all right. We all got our own views. Clean out just in case. Oh, right. And I am gonna call her finished. I would like to thank you guys so much for joining me today while I played with my Jane Davenport Power Pastels. Uh, I hope you give them a go. I know some people struggle with them, but you don't have to. You just need to have fun with them. Go to town, get heavy handed, lay down those colors. They are vibrant. They're nice and saturated and pigmented. It is a lot of fun. Let your artistic self out and get some stuff done. Have fun. That's the most important thing. It's just always have fun. And uh, I will see you guys next Friday. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, take care. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.